Free Sun for Adults? What? I'm Greg. I'm Julie. And we're the Crafty Winers. So we thought we'd do a fun one. <laughs> we're going to make wine out of Capri Sun Fruit Punch. And it is actually Mario Kart Special Ooh. Edition. So Even better. So that should be fun. And I know at this point, you serious winemakers out there are going, what are you doing? In fact, ins are doing the same. insert Stanley from the office saying, are you out of your damn mind? <laughs> Maybe we are. But we thought we'd have a fun experiment because we've been doing, you know, Cabernet and Merlot and Chardonnay and all the... Hobo. And Hobo wine. And, you know, so Capri Sun, why not? We actually had this idea when we were at our grandson's birthday party last weekend. My daughter had brought along a box of these Capri Suns, and I hadn't seen Capri Suns since they were little. And I started looking at the box, and I thought, I wonder if you can make wine out of this. And you can. And you can. Well, we think you can. We're going to try it. <laughs> and we're actually going to treat this as if it was a, a real... Merlot fine wine. wine. Um, we're going to do all the steps, the hydrometer, the pH, yeah, our the, hobo whole, wine. the whole just, nine yards. We just finished a hobo wine video, but we didn't use any tools because it's hobo wine on a Walmart budget. Everything <laughs> came from Walmart, and Walmart doesn't sell hydrometers pH meters or whatever. So. But this one, we're going to use all of our tools. Yep. And we're going to use cider yeast that we used for white wine, Chardonnay specifically. Uh, on this because it is good at preserving the fruity flavor and you've got to have your fruity fruit punch so yep. oh yeah i forgot it'll to be mention cold fermented at 55 degrees we got the fruit punch flavor so that's what we'll be working with so for the next uh probably half hour <laughs> we're going to be cutting the tops off these 22 <laughs> pouches of capri sun and putting them into our carboy we'll be right back okay we stopped at halfway at 11 packets and why did we do that? So that we can take a gravity reading to try to get an idea how much sugar we need to add. For all we know, we may have to add a lot of sugar. So we want to have room to do so before we hit our gallon marks that we marked, that we etched in our carboy. So we can see exactly where that mark is. And this is about halfway. And why do we do it at halfway? Because we have a formula that we came up with that will allow us to calculate what the gravity would be at a gallon. And we can calculate the amount of sugar now that we need to add and then we'll go ahead and fill it after we add our sugar we'll go ahead and add more Capri Sun to get up to the gallon mark and we've got our brand new yeah just got long, that today 50 milliliter baster that will reach all the way down to the bottom of this and it'll reach into our six and a half gallon carboys <laughs> yeah we were fighting with the short one so last night if you don't know how specific gravity works or why we're doing this. We have a video dedicated to that. We're not going to complicate this video with that information. So go watch that and come back. So our gravity at half was 1.02. Using our formula that I will put up on the screen. That means that when we get to our gallon mark, as it is right now, we would be 1.010. And we want this to be around 10%, we think. So we're going to try to get it to 1.08. So that means that we need to add 28 ounces of sugar. We're going to get that sugar ready and pour it into this. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we took it up to the gallon mark that we etched in the carboy. And then I shook it real good. Now we're going to take a specific gravity to get our original initial gravity reading. And we'll go from there. So our initial gravity is 1.092. Probably we put a little too much sugar. Probably wasn't exactly 50% that we stopped at. <laughs> this is a 12%-ish potential. So that's good. That is definitely Capri Sun for adults. <laughs> no, not for the weak of heart. Which is actually what we called this recipe. Capri Sun for adults. The question is can we get it back in these bags oh, to drink it out of yeah it's for break time at work yeah mm. mm -hmm. nobody'd ever know so i put the wine from the graduated cylinder back in here and like i do every time i'm taking it right back out again because now we're doing our additives he always forgets that 
So we are going to just be putting Fermato, which is yeast nutrient. This stuff right and here. You can't see it on camera probably, but there is stuff floating in here and I'm going to make myself believe that it is fruit particles. So we decided that we are going to put pectic enzyme in, which should help clear that a little. If that is indeed what it is, but that may be why they use containers that you can't see through. Because this does not look like fruit punch. That and the color, yeah. yeah. And it has stuff floating in it. So I'm putting a half a teaspoon of Fermato, and then I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of the Peptic also. She'll mix that real good, and then we will put it in here using our funnel. Okay, I mix that up real good. We'll pour that in there. It must have came out. Yeah, it did. So we a lot of times put wine tannin in our wines, our reds, and even our Chardonnays, but we decided to not do tannins in this. <laughs> Just don't know how that would be, so. We don't know how this is gonna be, period, so. We'll be learning together. <laughs> okay, now guess what I get to do again? Shake. Shake. For about three minutes. Shaking this adds a lot of oxygen, you can see bubbles everywhere and that's good for the yeast. It's good so. for right now, yeah. Now we're going to test the pH and again we have a video for that. We're not going to show it here. We're hoping that the pH is going to be between four and six right off the bat, but if it's not we'll need to adjust it and we don't like that. We don't like doing pH adjustments. No, we don't. So watch our video to see exactly why, why? we don't. So now I'm being the whiner. I, I hate the pH. pH is 4.07. Woohoo! So we're not going to touch it. We're going to let it stay there. Should be between 4 and 6, so perfect. Okay, so now we're about to the point where we're going to be dealing with the yeast. If your Capri Sun was refrigerated before you put it in here, you're going to want to let it warm up to... Uh, at least room temperature. At least room temperature before you proceed. But we are going to be taking out about a quarter cup and warming it. We use a little heater, antique heater, I believe. And we'll show antique. you that. We'll show you how we do that. But get a quarter cup of must, which is this juice that we're going to ferment. You're stretching it by saying it's must, I think. It's by definition. Capri Sun. Must. And sugar. So this must, Capri Sun must, has the fermato, which is the yeast nutrient, and it has the correct amount of sugar. So right off the bat, the yeast will like this, but there, the yeast isn't going to like the temperature necessarily right now because it's, this is probably 70 degrees or something. So we're going to heat this up and then add the yeast and let it sit for about 20 minutes and get all happy. We like to heat both the jug and the, the uh, measuring cup that the yeast is going to go into together mm -hmm. so that when we pour the yeast into this, it'll be the same temperature and it's not going to shock it. Okay, so we've let this stay on the heater for about five minutes. I'm assuming that this is probably around 80 degrees now. It feels like it is. So we're going to go ahead and add teaspoon. one teaspoon of our cider yeast that we use for white wines, which just, technically, I mean, this is white. It's going to be a white wine. <laughs> so just sprinkle it on top. It's a lot of yeast. And then we're going to let this sit. You can let it sit for up to two hours. Uh, we're going to probably let it sit for about 20, 30 minutes. So we'll be back when this is done. Okay. So it's been about 30 minutes. Uh, and this is definitely happier than it was. Again, it wouldn't hurt to let it sit longer, but it also won't hurt to put it in now based on our experience with this yeast. After about another hour, there would be a lot more activity and probably some bubbling and stuff. So like I said, it, you can let it uh, sit longer if you want to, if you want to see how pretty it gets. <laughs> but we're just going to pour it in so we can get on to the next step. And some, a little bit of juice to mix. Yeah, we wash the rest of that out. Using Capri, Capri Sun. Sun of course. <laughs> no 
yeast left behind in this kitchen. Julie has the airlock all ready to go. So it's a hold bung with silicone tubing and I'll have links in the description. This is going to get very active and this bung as you see isn't a perfect fit for this carboy. No, and it'll so pop out. We'll get some twist ties and tie it around. In fact, I'll show you that. So I just get two twist ties, twist them together so it's nice and long. Put a twist tie through the handle and then up to the opposite side of the hose so that the hose is actually kind of keeping it in place. Twist it down and then that's not going anywhere now. There's no way that that's going to come out. So then this goes into our fermenting room which stays around 55 degrees and this yeast will like that. Yep. So we're not using a carboy heater like we would on a red wine. So this is ready to go. The other end of this we're going to put into the bucket of sanitizer that we've been using. So this bucket has a star sand solution to so put the other end into it. This is up on a shelf and it makes it so that CO2 can exit. It can bubble up through the star sand but nothing is going to crawl through the star sand to get into our tube so that it can get to our wine so it protects it. If it can crawl through star sand it's, it's pretty tough. amazing it's stuff. Tough. <laughs> This is uh, called a blow-off tube, and this is how we start all of our fermentations for the first three days or so when the activity is the most strong. And then we'll probably switch to a regular airlock after that. Yep, so we are going to put this in our fermentation room, and we don't know, I mean this is a complete experiment for us, so we don't know exactly how long this is going to take to get through the I'm fermentation process, but I would assume it's going to be similar to our white weeks. wines. Probably so, four weeks. Yeah, probably about four weeks. So this is part one, and then we will uh, put out part two when it's ready to do that. So hope you liked this video. If you did, please click the like button. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please do and tell it you want to receive all notifications. If you have subscribed to our channel, thank you very much for your support. We appreciate it. So until next time, cheers.